Hello everybody, this is Jack Bay 1024 and welcome to episode 51 of our Dynamic Factory Let's Play series. So this is going to be a different episode to most because this episode I'm going to just be going over everything we've done in the last 50 episodes as a quick sort of summary of it all. Uh, mostly useful for those who haven't actually seen all 50 episodes yet, but you know, even if you have, uh, you know, it's probably good to also refresh your memories of things we've done in the past. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about, and it's the most important part about this Let's Play series, is that I wanted a Let's Play series that was very heavily focused on circuit networks and designing circuits. And the biggest issue with Factorio is there's very few reasons to actually use the circuit networks. Circuit networks let you do a lot of things, but uh, just in the general game, you know, there's only a few use cases for it. Like the uranium enrichment could use a circuit network. Um, you know, controlling whether or not nuclear reactors are on or off, that's also a useful thing for a circuit network. Uh, you know, turning on uh, turning on uh, boilers and steam engines, that could also be controlled by a circuit network that's checking your accumulator voltage. But, you know, apart from those sort of things, there's no real reason to go all out and make a huge factory that actually needs circuit work networks to work. So, to fix that, I added a mod, well, made a mod as well. It's called Dynamic Science. Uh, this is a Dynamic Science recipe. So what it does is every hour, the recipes will change for everything above green science. So red and green science are the same as always. And the reason I did that is because they're needed to get to circuit networks. And I didn't want, um, yeah, getting to circuit networks to be hard. I wanted from circuit networks onwards to be where the challenge comes into play. So military science packs, there are two different um, variants of it. There's the normal one and there's this one. I might actually put up image showing the different variants we have at the moment. So there's the two for military science packs. Uh, for blue science packs there's three different variants. And then to do, but I haven't done it yet, we will have purple science packs will have five variants. Yellow will have seven. I think that means the only one we're missing then is space, and I want to give space 11. Uh, probably most all of those numbers are prime. I believe they're the correct numbers, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, yes. They're all prime, which means uh, that it's the maximum amount of time before uh, the set of recipes you'll have returns to being the same thing that it's been before. So what does that mean? That means, let's say we want to make military science because we want to research. Let's look at something we haven't researched yet. We want to research uh, bullet shooting speed four. So we need military science packs. Well, for the moment, they would need firearm magazines, gate, and a gun turret. But in an hour, well, less than an hour, that recipe will change. So if we set up a whole, I probably don't have any assembling machines on me. Nope. So if we set up a whole, Let's go over here then. Let's say we set up, you know, a production chain to make military science packs. You know, that could only run for one hour and then the recipe would change and it would turn off. And same with blue science packs, but one recipe will only be there one out of every three hours. Which means, let's say we had a recipe that needed both military and blue. That could only run constantly once every six hours. And of course that gets worse the higher up you go because the higher the numbers are and the longer before it will reset to being all of those crafting recipes being on at the same time. So to counteract that, what we have, let's go to one of our crafting stations. We have this other mod, it's called uh, Crafting Combinators, I believe is the name, and it allows you to set the recipe for assembling machines. So all these recipes for all these assembling machines here are set by this constant combinator here. So that way we can basically control what one of these banks is crafting. And that way we can switch it around to be what the current recipe is. I haven't done that yet, that is still to be done. So let's go through things that we've done in the past. So first few episodes we uh, you know, got red and green science set up so that we could get combinators. 
and we set up this layout, which was how we were originally going to do our dynamic factory part. So as you can see, uh, there were going to be several lines going up from south to north here that would go across each of these banks. These banks would determine uh, whether or not this item was to go to this crafting area. So as you can see, iron plates would come to this area and out of this area would come uh, iron gear wheels, which were told to go into this line. So that way you could easily just change uh, what recipe and what you wanted in a bank and it would change what was allowed to come in through all of these transport belts and determine what would go out and where it would go. The issue with this is you can see, I think this is just to make red and green science and ignoring the part that I deconstructed, uh, it's already fairly large. So every single time we would have a new bank, you'd need a whole new set of whatever size you're at. So say, nope, you can't do that here. This size, and every time you wanted a new item, you'd need to have a new row on the bottom. So it just ends up being way too large. So we actually moved away from that idea. But I think we did at least, let me just quickly check. I have all the episodes up on my second monitor. Yeah, so I think we did at least get uh, the brain set up. Though, no, the brain was a few episodes later, but it was before trains so though, at least. So this brain basically was able to determine what each bay was crafting. And while it didn't have the ability yet to determine whether or not we should change anything, um, I think there were some constant combinators around here that I could set up and it would actually tell those bays, okay, now you're meant to craft this. So this brain over here was actually able to control what was being crafted over here, which is a useful step and something we will have to go back to soonish. Uh, haven't changed this lovely display since episode 11. Well, uh, after that, what we did is we got ready for trains. So you can see all of this runs off our train network. Now that's useful because it means that, you know, instead of having all of these uh, transport belts and you have to have crosses and you have to have, you know, rows on rows on rows on rows and columns on columns, you can just have, you know, one train line going in, one train line going out, and the trains themselves can determine what gets dropped off at a station and where the stuff that is picked up from the station will go. Now these train lines are all controlled with a different mod, which is called Smarter Trains. Let's see if I can actually find my car. It's over the other side. I might actually, I'll just pull up a train from here. So here's smarter trains. Um, the interface, actually, I'll go to a, I'll go to a depot because you can actually see a few more things from the actual depot. And yeah, we'll have to go this way. So there was a train and it just dropped off our crude oil for our refinery here. So here we go. So a few things that are important with uh, smarter trains. One, each train uh, can be given a particular uh, a particular line that it's following. So this one's actually following the dynamic line. That's what the main trains we have follow. And each station can be given a particular number. And we're just numbering them from one upwards. So you'll see that uh, each train station has a number in its name, and I've just given it the same number just to make things easy. Now, stations themselves can have rules. So stations can either go to a signal number, which is controlled if I go to a destination depot. So there's this combinator here, which connects to this light, and this light will um, set what the, uh, this particular circuit. So signal destination number, that determines where this train will go. And that is not connected. That is not good that train stop would not actually work without that being connected and set up correctly. So that has to get connected there. And then you actually need a one tick delay before it goes into your depot. So all these trains, every single train we have on the main line has every single station on the main line. And so what will happen is we have this little brain over here, which has suppliers and destinations. And these are memory cells. And this will store, you know, what can we supply? So we can supply coal, copper wire, transport belt, copper ore, and I think that's just normal ammo. 
And what demands do we have? We have demands for military science, turrets, the piercing ammo, iron ore, inserters, iron gears, copper plates, and iron plates. And we actually have more demand for iron ore and copper plates, and even more for iron ore. So then, these two values go over here, and this will deter, um, detect what we have a supply of and a demand of, and it will determine which one we're going to go to, and it will send a train off to that station uh, that we have supplying, with an eventual purpose to go to wherever the destination is. It also stores the destination in this memory cell bank up here, and so let's see if we can see a train that's actually going anywhere. Well, it's already on its way to the next station. Where is... Oh, here we go. Cool. So here we go. Here, this train knows that it has to go to this iron ore mine. Now, when it gets here, there is a circuit. It is this one here. That'll go off and actually tell it which carriages need to be filled. So which cargo wagon. So only the first four need to be filled. And it also tells it what its next destination is. It's into here. So it's going to go to station 31 next. So if we look for this, station 31 is probably going to be a furnace. And it is, it is this furnace. So this train was told to go to this iron ore mine, fill up the first four wagons with iron ore, and then once it's done, to go down to this furnace down here. Now this means we can easily, you know, add on more stations to our whole network uh, without actually, you know, having to lay that much extra track without having to worry about too much uh, to do with routing trains. We just, you know, add the new stations onto the end of the train list, set up their numbers, set up their rules so that if it is a station that loads up the train with stuff, it has to go to signal number. If it's a station where the train drops off stuff, it goes to station one, which is our waiting bay. Because it's done what it had to do. So we just need to add that onto that. And there's our new station already hooked up. What else did we do? Let's see. So that's us. We got our trains. We started all that up. That's how our train network goes. That's probably a fair bit of it. There's a few more little bits and pieces to our circuit network around here. So here is a fairly complex circuit. Every single station has this circuit. And how this one works is if a train's coming to unload stuff, uh, these constant combinators here are how we actually set what this station does. So the bottom row sends up uh, what requirements it has, and the top row has what it delivers. So this one needs copper plate, uh, steel plate, and normal ammo. So you can see there's a copper plate. This would be steel plate, but it's empty, and this is the normal ammo. Uh, the second one tells us... The second one's the station number times 128, and the third one is a bit mask of which carriages have to be filled up. So this circuit here will check if any of them don't have enough, and it will send off a request using this circuit here, which will connect to a main line, being the first line here, which goes and adds it to one of these two memory cells. Uh, because this is a demand, it would add it to this set of memory cells. Now let's say we had enough Let's go to one of these that actually could have enough. Here we go. So this one has enough uh, normal ammo. So what it would do is it would use the second, uh, the the top set of combinators, which should look very similar to the bottom because it's basically the same design. And it checks if there's enough. And if so, it'll send off a request again on the uh, first main line. But this time it goes to our supply memory cells. So that's how that all works. The top part here is when a train gets to a station to fill up with the resources, this part here will tell it uh, which wagons to fill up and what its next destination is. And that connects to the second line, which will connect all the way over here to, it should be this one up here, which eventually connects into this little circuit here, which actually reads it from this circuit here to our memory cells. So very recently, we've actually added a new feature and we're still in the process of completely adding it. And that is, this new feature is uh, counting how many resources are in our factory in total. Uh, so you can see the screen line here. It's counting resources that we're counting as being consumed because any resource that passes this line is basically gonna be consumed by our factory. As far as we're concerned, it's already being consumed. 
And then we have a red line over here, which is resources that are being entered into our factory. And so these will connect up to here. We only have a few things on this network at the moment. Here they are kind of, you can see them uh, going through the red and green signals here. They go into here and they eventually go into this memory cell. Now this is storing a total since we set it up. So since we actually set up this circuit, we've made 727,000 crude oil, 115,000 iron plates, consumed 4,500 coal, and 115,000 iron ore. So our plan for this will be, and this will be next episode's uh, circuit, we're going to actually make it count it minute by minute. And then we can look at those values and detect, you know, what are we getting more of uh, you know, what are we getting a surplus of? What are we producing at a peak rate higher than we're actually consuming it now so we could actually support more consumers for it? And that will be eventually added to our brain when we are make our complete circuit brain. What other things are important? So we have that also for fluids. Uh, this fluid is... I don't think any of them are actually set up correctly yet, no. We do have a sample of it up here. So this is a circuit that actually counts the fluids. Fluids are a bit more annoying because they can slosh around and because fluids are actually not integers, they're floats. They can have decimal points. Well, combinators can only have decimal points. Uh, it's a bit more complex to actually be able to count fluids. But this circuit's able to do it and it's able to get it within uh, one of what the actual value is every time basically. It's always one low because of that way the circuit is set up. So I think we have the old version counting our crude oil, but we don't have anything counting our crude oil being consumed, which is why we believe we've made 700,000 when really we've made that, but we've also processed most of it. So I think that should bring everyone basically up to date with what's happened in the last 50 episodes. Uh, well, I haven't actually mentioned these strains, but we haven't actually looked at these strains in 20 to 30 episodes. Uh, these strains are here so that if we have, say this station is making iron gear wheels and we need to switch it to make something else because one of our recipes has changed and we don't need iron gear wheels anymore, or we don't need as many, uh, what will happen is a train will come down here, fill up on iron gear wheels, and then go over here and park at this station and one of these trains, which will be allocated to have iron gear wheels, it'll come over and it'll fill up all of its uh, cargo wagons with as many iron gear wheels as possible. So that uh, we don't just have, you know, gear wheels clogging up the system. That's what these trains are for. I've only really tested it a bit with one of them and that was the only time I think the only time, I don't think I've died from a train again. No. So that's the only time I've ever died by a train in all of my Factorio playing. Um, yeah, so that's basically it. At the moment, at the moment we must have a different science recipe, yes. So this is set to do the default uh, military science recipe, which is why none of these uh, assembling machines are on at the moment because these are not the right resources and that's not telling it to do the right recipe. So you can see, so, you know, until this hour ticks over, basically we won't be making any more military science, which is obviously an issue, but uh, switching over that will take a few episodes to design. So that's going to be coming later. But yeah, I think that's it. It's a shorter episode than most but should get everyone up to date with what's happened in the last 50 episodes. So this is JackB1024 signing off. Have a good day and I'll see you tomorrow.